This video will be covering a topic about Void Linux installation and post-installation tips, mainly focusing on system optimization, especially for low-end hardware. Right now, the first step will be downloading the Void Linux ISO file. I recommend choosing the glibc Live X ISO image instead of the lighter, muzzle image, mainly because of glibc's broad compatibility with legacy software. The second step is downloading Vintui, a program which will allow us to burn an ISO file of Void Linux onto a USB device. Make sure to follow these steps carefully, pause, and repeat certain segments of the video in case you didn't understand a certain part. Right now, I'll be downloading a TAR version of the program, because I'm using Linux. The third step involves unpacking the TAR archive and running the Vintui program. Essentially, a USB device has to be chosen from the drop-down menu. A partition scheme for the USB drive has to be chosen. I recommend GPT for UEFI PCs, and an option for secure boot can be left checked or unchecked, depending on your PC. I have a Lenovo B570 laptop, which has a hybrid BIOS, and I had to disable secure boot in Vintui settings, after which I could successfully boot into it without the no secure boot device error. You can try different USB ports if you are not immediately successful with the boot. Safely unmount the USB device and power of your PC. After that, power the PC on and you should boot into Ventoy. After successfully configuring Vintui onto a USB device, an ISO file can be moved onto the Vintui partition which does not contain the eFi directory. This process can be simplified by using a graphical file manager, such as Thunner, which Void Linux comes with by default, but I chose the terminal method as an alternative. LSBLK command is used to list all PC's drives, and the slash dev slash sdb drive is the USB drive for my laptop. It contains two partitions after Vintoy installation. One partition should be empty, and Linux ISO files should be moved there. Another partition contains EFI, Grub, Tool, and Vintoy directories, and should not be modified. To install Void Linux, a terminal must be launched, and sudo void installer has to be typed. The terminal can easily be launched in XFC with Alt plus T keyboard combo, and the window can be maximized with the Alt plus F10 key combo. When it comes to the installation, the process is rather straightforward. First, a keyboard layout has to be chosen. Second, a network can be configured, but this step can be skipped. Next, a repository mirror has to be chosen, a host name has to be set, as well as the locale and time zone. Next, I recommend setting a password for the root user. After that, a user account should be created and appropriate groups for the user should be chosen. Next step is choosing a disk for bootloader installation and a system has to be partitioned. When it comes to the partition scheme, I recommend first creating an EFI partition for booting for UEFI systems with a size ranging from 100 to 512 megabytes. 
a swap partition, which should be one. Five to two times the size of RAM and a root partition for the system. A separate home partition can also be created, which I've omitted right now. After that, the mount points should be configured like this, slash boot, slash FE for the EFI boot partition, swap for the swap partition, and slash for the root partition. Once all of that is done, the system can be installed. Z-Swap is a way of compressing data in RAM, which can make the process of swapping faster if the swap partition is used, and there's frequent swapping to disk. Ensure that a swap partition is created and proceed with enabling Z-Swap by modifying slash etc slash default slash grub file, and adding Z-Swap. Enabled equals 1 to grub underscore cmd line underscore linux underscore default. It is also recommended to add Z-Swap, compressor, and Z-Swap, max underscore pool underscore percent parameters. By default, the max underscore pool underscore percent parameter has a value of 20, and it specifies how much RAM will be used to store compressed data. For systems with low amounts of RAM, ZSTD compressor is recommended, as well as the Z. When it comes to configuring swappiness and VFS cache pressure, what should be known is that the lower the swappiness value is, the less the system will swap to disk. A value of 10 is recommended here. The higher the value for VFS cache pressure is, the system will clear programs from cache faster to make room for other programs. I recommend a value of 50 here. To make the changes persist, slash etc slash SYC deal. CONF can be created with the values for swappiness and VFS cache pressure specified there. For the extension 4 file system, this option can significantly improve performance, as it is a lighter journaling method compared to the default method. It should be noted though, that some users have said that after enabling this option, they've experienced file system corruption at times, which can oftentimes be fixed with the FSCK slash dev slash SDXY, where X is the specified disk and Y the specified disk partition command. Therefore, user caution is advised.
the lazy time option which should be added in slash etc slash stab, specifically, in the line of the slash root partition, after defaults and separated by a comma allows the file access times to be delayed and written to a disk when they are grouped, which can improve performance. Recommended I.O. schedulers for an HDD are BFU and MQ deadline, while NOOP and Kyber are recommended for SSDs, based on my research. To make the change of the I.O. scheduler persist across reboots a line which echoes a string into a scheduler file can be added to slash etc slash rc. Local. The BFU scheduler has a number of parameters which can be tweaked. The slice underscore idle parameter can be configured from the default value of 8 to about 4. This essentially means that the disk idle time has been reduced. Each time a process finishes a task, slide underscore idle timer starts, and if the process requests disk IO access again, it will be given it, provided it doesn't exhaust the max underscore budget parameter, which is set to zero by default, meaning it automatically manages the maximum budget without a specific value being set which ensures all processes get a fair share of disk I.O. access. Now, it is important to mention that HDD gets better speeds when it performs sequential operations, which would be achieved with a higher slide underscore idle values. But it would also cause the idle time to be longer, which essentially means that the disk is waiting for the response of the process, not executing tasks. Lower values help with general responsiveness because other tasks may be given the opportunity to request I.O. access sooner but at the cost of throughput, latency will be lower.